We are taking a look at how the new and shiny M3 Max 16-inch MacBook Pro with 16 cores, 12 efficiency cores works in a mixing scenario working with audio and effect plugins using low 32 buffer sizes. CPU load, temperature and fan noise is also covered in today's video. And if you are more interested in software synthesizers and how that performs, I have made a video about that and it should pop up over here. I recommend that you watch the actual testing in this video because there are some interesting differences between Logic, Ableton and the other DAWs I'm testing. The project files are available for downloads, so you can try it out yourself on your computer, but you need to have the FabFilter mastering plugins to match the setup I have made in this video. The Logic project is set up in this way. I'm using 32 in buffer size, 3.2 milliseconds round trip, 1.5 milliseconds output. I have manually set this to 16 cores and I'm using process buffer range to small. That's basically it. So here's a funny thing. When I was preparing for this test, I made a channel strip here and I loaded it with Pro Q3 and EQ from FabFilter and Pro MB, a multiband compressor from FabFilter. I had to actually stop when I reached to over 12,000 tracks. It was then peaking at about 50% CPU usage on this performance meter. But the reason I had to stop this was because duplicating all of these tracks took like 30 minutes of loading time in Logic. So it would duplicate all of these tracks, it would load in all of the plugins, and I had to wait like 15 minutes until like Logic had equalized itself and I could press play here and we got up to up around 50% there, a little bit over that. Just to get this project more manageable, I decided to actually increase the load somewhat on the plugins here used on the channel strip, because you ha have some settings on these FabFilter plugins, which will increase the CPU load. So let's take a look at how I have set up the channel strip here. So first we are using FabFilter Pro Q3. I'm uh, setting it to natural phase here, which is more demanding on the CPU. CPU. On Pro MB we are using 4x in oversampling and on the FabFilter compressor oversampling 4x Saturn enable linear phase high quality. The audio file you see here is just a loop from Logic. When I was running this without screen recording, I was able to run about uh, 225 tracks and you can see now on the CPU load how this looks. So it's pushing the CPU to its limits here now through these plugins. At the same time, we can take a look at the. Okay, so now went into system overload. That's because I'm screen recording, okay? I'm going to remove some tracks here, but remember that this M3 Max 16 core was able to run 225 tracks without screen recording. But let's take a look at the CPU temperature and fans. I'm not hearing any fan noise at the moment. The fans are on, but I'm not hearing them. Now I'm hearing some slight fan noise. Then again, this project is not realistic. It's just to show how it might work in an audio setting using just audio files, not synthesizers and using uh, effects plugins. Let's fast forward a little bit. Just loop this and make the uh, computer heat up itself. So I'm going to record the fan noise from the MacBook Pro. I'm holding my iPhone from it and I have a uh, mouse here which you can see on the image. I'm going to click on the mouse button so you can compare the levels from the fan noise and from the mouse button. And remember the system here is now pressured really hard.
So we can see that the logic project is still going here, it's looping and uh, the fans are ramping up, they are not running at 100%, the fans are running probably around 80% and it's able to cool the uh, CPU cores down here. I can hear the fan noise but it's not something that is really annoying, I, I mean that is subjective of course, but how realistic is a workflow like this? This is not a realistic workflow, it's just pushing audio 100% into the plugins at the same time. That's, I mean, that's never happening. And it's able to do that here with 225 tracks. So I think this uh, gets a pass in my book, at least. And here are the uh, numbers for cooling and uh, the CPU temperature. And again, you can see here that uh, Logic is now pushing all of the performance cores really hard here. And the efficiency cores are not used uh, that much. It's probably the screen recording and just drawing the graphics here and some things like that. So this behaves a little differently compared to Logic. So if you haven't seen the Logic test, I actually recommend checking that out, even if you're only interested in Ableton Live. But anyway, I have set up Ableton Live here with 32 samples and 48 kilohertz, as you can see here. And the difference here is that you see the CPU load go up uh, without me starting the project at all. In Logic it is, did not do this way. I have this set up like this, so I have a channel here where I'm using sample just from Ableton Live and I have loaded up some uh, mixing plugins from FabFilter. So we are using the Q3 in Natural Phase, we are using Multiband Compressor in 4x, just a regular compressor in 4x oversampling here as well, and we are using Saturn where we have activated Linear Phase, we are going for high quality and good. What's happening here now, as you could see, if you haven't seen the Logic project, it was able to push all of the performance cores here into the more or less the roof. So if I'm playing here now, I'm just using 131 tracks. And remember that the Logic project actually was able to run 232 tracks. So you can see the CPU load goes up here in Ableton, but it's not hitting the roof. We can see that the audio buffer here is just over 170% so it's not possible to do anything more it's just crackles in the background there. So to get this working we actually have to remove some of the tracks. Okay so I have 70 tracks I'm playing it back but I'm hearing just distorted uh, sound. I don't know if, if it's uh, acceptable just to re let's reduce it to 50. This sounds better. I don't know if we hear any crackle here. Yeah, maybe some crackle. So at the same uh, buffer settings, Logic was able to handle over 230 tracks and Ableton Live is just handling 50 tracks. And as you can see here, Ableton is not able to push the CPUs at max here. You see that it's, it's just a hard cutoff here. But if we compare it with the Logic CPU meter, you can see that Logic was able to push the CPUs higher. Thus Logic in my head is able to utilize the performance of the Mac better. So a little fun fact, my uh, 2020 M1 MacBook Pro with just four performance cores and four efficiency cores was able to handle 63 tracks but that was with uh, logic it's actually more than uh, it's able to handle here the m3 max pretty funny when we look at the ableton website they always recommend to go below 128 samples because of uh, apple silicon so let's see how this works let's just duplicate it to 100 tracks again So 128 samples, let's see here what happens here. So setting it to 105 tracks in Ableton Live, you can see that the CPU 
load actually goes up here at almost the same level uh, when using logic. But I had to set the sample size to 128. It wasn't able to push it with uh, 32 in sample rates. Pretty strange. So this just shows that there are of course differences in how these DOS work under the hood. Logic works in a certain way. Ableton works obviously in a certain way. So here I'm able to push Ableton to the max, but it's only 105 tracks. Whereas in Logic I was able to use 232 tracks. And we turn it down to 32. You can see it just struggles and the CPU load goes down. It's not even trying seems like. So yeah, I don't know what we can say about Ableton. Ableton in 32 buffer size, maybe 50 tracks. And even in 128 buffer size, it's not even able to go much over 100 tracks. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the numbers. So if you haven't seen the logic test or the Ableton test in the start of the video, you should take a look at those so you understand how I set this up but it's basically audio tracks using mixing plugins from FabFilter. But the thing is that this is working pretty strange or th there's a lot of differences between these DAWs because okay so I have set this to 32 samples here and 48 kilohertz so people wanted to see how this Mac works in a mixing scenario. So I have audio tracks here I think it's 40 tracks using these plugins and I'm just playing this back. And you can see that as on Ableton Live, you just hear a crackled sound. And you can see that the CPU load is not really going up in the roof. We can actually see here that we get CPU load on all cores here. So actually on four efficiency cores and also the performance cores. So this is also what I saw in Ableton Live. So if I go in here and I change the buffer size to let's say 128. No problems. Okay. But uh, we have four tracks here. Increase the track counting again a little bit here to let's say 80. Yeah, that's working. You can see the CPU load here, it goes pretty high. I don't hear any audible crackle or something. So let's duplicate 80 tracks to 160. Okay, so 160 tracks not possible in 128 buffer size with these uh, plugins. Again, check the Logic project or the Ableton project to see the settings. And we are running 128 samples now. And remember in the Logic project, I was able to run 32 samples and uh, 232 tracks. Okay, so we are doing the same test on Reaper here. And again, you have to check the Ableton Live or Ableton setup so you see how the effect plugins are set up. So this project is set manually to 32 in block size here. I have unchecked the allow project to override device sample rate. Otherwise everything here is at default. While screen recording it's able to play back about 70 tracks. So I guess that's a little more than in Ableton Live and Bitweek. A lot more actually. So you hear some crackle here. Again, you can see that the CPU goes into the roof, also the efficiency cores, everything is just going straight to the, to the roof here. So uh, let's go to 60 tracks. Yeah, seems like uh, that's kind of the sweet spot here. So it's around 60, 70 tracks in Reaper using uh, this type of Mac and these settings with these plugins. Yeah, this is really interesting. See how this is 
works actually. So some sort of conclusion and it looks like Logic Pro is taking the lead here being able to play back 232 tracks when I'm not screen recording on the M3 Max MacBook Pro and this is with 3.2 milliseconds round trip latency and 1.5 milliseconds output latency. Ableton Live is barely handling 50 to 60 tracks in the same kind of setup using 32 in buffer size and the same plugins playing uh, just a drum loop and here the input latency on Ableton Live is 1.67 milliseconds and the output latency is 2.19 milliseconds. But when I increased the buffer size in Ableton to 128 it performed much better. It was able to handle almost 100 tracks and this with 3.5 milliseconds input and output latency but still Logic performed better in my eyes at least. My M1 13 inch MacBook Pro from 2020 is able to run 63 tracks in Logic with these settings. But the latency here was higher. It was 7.4 milliseconds round trip and 4.4 milliseconds output. Bitwig and Reaper is handling it a little better compared to Ableton somewhere around 60 to 70 tracks. But again this is dwarfed by the performance I saw in Logic. I might also do the testing wrong. I mean, if so, I apologize, but I at least I hope this gives you some kind of general information on how these computers perform in music production and in this particular uh, scenario, more of a mixing scenario. When you push the CPU on the M3 Max for a long period of time, if it will of course eventually heat up and the fans needs to kick in, these workflow we are watching in these videos are really unrealistic workflows and in daily general use I don't think you would notice the fan in my opinion. And if you saw the fan part of the testing in this video you can see that it was actually able to cool down the CPU without running the fan at 100% which is it's not that bad in my opinion and as we also have included in other videos and other YouTubers have done as well these DOS are utilizing the performance cores on your Mac and the efficiency cores are well doing other stuff. Reaper is able to use the efficiency cores if you want it to but I'm unsure if it really amounts to anything so I should actually spend more time testing Reaper so my results there are a little bit unconclusive I would say but I have the project file available so you can download it and you can try it for yourself but again you need the fab filter mastering plugins to test it just like I did in this video also make sure to check out the next video that pops up it's probably something related to this and I don't want to bore you with uh, subscribe and like this video. And now I think I'm actually going to try to make some uh, music with this thing after I have edited this video of course. Questions? I guess you have them. They can be typed below and I will try to answer uh, the ones I can answer. And um, I guess I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.